in case you missed it, here's some scenes from part one of my Thanksgiving solo camp out. Got a coral snake here. I'm not gonna get real close because that's venomous. Red touch yellow kill a fella. Oh. Cute. Monkey was worried because I just brought enough food for supper. She's like, what if you get hungry in the middle of the night? I said, I'll be fine. So I open this up and here these are. <laughs> oh, bless her heart. Here. But we got flame. There we go. It wasn't too bad. An idiot is up here blowing the horn like mad. We're almost to the gate. All right. Hear it? Okay. Hang on, guys. Well, that's Monkey's camera. Just had an airboat just right, right up to the. I seen tire tracks. They. I'll load him there, but he ran right up to the bank. Okay, so that guy dropped that guy off and he walked right past here. And then it looked like he started walking up the road there, so I don't know. Maybe he's camping and they took him for a ride. Huh, don't matter, as long as they ain't bothering me. There we go. All right. It's almost story time. Okay guys, so, I'm sitting down, I'm kinda laying down because my back is really killing me. <laughs> I got plenty of room to sit up in this thing and I don't have it all the way up yet. So, this is what I got to drink. I know everybody does these reviews too, but you know, I've always brought something different to drink, whether I'm filming or not. Let's see, Arizona fruit punch. So, let's see this. all natural fruit juice cocktail, 23 ounces to 680 milliliters so I'm gonna give this a try contains 10% juice serving size is eight fluid ounces so they consider this thir this uh, serving shake well I do not think this is an alcohol drink <laughs> that kind of sucks But I'm gonna try it. Okay, so the story on that thing is that uh, Monkey was having a yard sale a couple weeks ago, and you guys are kind of crooked here. I'm trying to fix you. <laughs> and this guy, he. He bought something. He, he just walked past and he goes down to the store and he bought bought a couple things off of her. Went to the store and he come back and he gave that to her and said, give this to your old man. I thought it was an alcohol drink, but apparently it's not, but that's okay. We'll have one next time. But it is something different. So, so we're going to put this tab. Set it down here. Drop my light. All right. Damn it. Jesus. All right. I'll put it back here behind me. Let's give this a shot. Two thumbs up, five out of five stars. 
All right, guys, I got to do this again. I thought I was recording, but apparently I wasn't. So I got to do all this again for you. Um, Citrus County, Florida. Here's some reports. Um, here we go. Uh, October 10th, Class B, possible footprint found in vocalizations heard in the Flying Eagle wildlife management area now that's just that's not far from here it's kind of any uh it's out a little farther than what we are um if i left here in a car i could be there probably in about 10 or 15 minutes but as the crow flies it's not that far um <clears throat> September 10th, or September 2010, Class A, man described several compelling incidents while hunting in the Withlacoochee State Forest. Now, we've had you guys out there before uh, in that old, old cemetery. There was a really old cemetery out there to where there was a teacher buried, and some say it was her students, and I was also reading where it, it was her kids that's buried there so I don't know no one knows for sure but there's a little town it's a ghost town there's not much left of it anymore hardly anything at all there's some remnants you can tell there used to be stuff there uh, it was called Manfield so July 1983 class B father and son were out scouting for deer when they spot large eyes eight feet off the ground also heard loud scream uh if you guys remember that uh last year back section, last year on my solo in december on my solo yearly annual solo camp out um i saw them eyes across the river <laughs> and they were about eight feet off the ground I, I seen them in my light okay guys i'm not crazy but just about a minute ago, right through them trees there on the other side of the river, I just seen two eyes walking, kind of like a human. Uh, March 1961, Class B, man recalls a possible up close nighttime encounter on Gilchrist Island. I'll have to take you there sometimes, it's really cool. All right, now, um, let's see here. All right, we'll start with this one. <clears throat> report received from the GCBRO online report submission form. Uh, this was July 1974. Time was 9 to 10 a.m. Location Inverness, Florida, Citrus County. We're in Inverness right now. Well, we're kind of outside of Inverness. Uh, if I drive a car from here to our house, it's about a five-minute drive, so we're pretty close. It's an hour and 20 minutes on the tractor, but you get the idea. So as the crow flies, it wouldn't be that far. Um, it is <clears throat> 5.8 miles exactly from the gate to our house. It's 5.8 miles. Uh, the terrain was wooded, observed. Um, a couple friends and myself saw a large hairy man walking through the woods near our play area. It was probably 50 yards from us. I did not hear any noises as it walked, branches snapping, whatnot. I, I can't recall how many of us saw it because we never talked about it. Being kids, around seven or eight at the time, we just shrugged it off and started playing. I remember not feeling scared. I know the thing had to have heard us coming. We were walking through the woods on the way to our play area because we were probably talking and carrying on like kids do. I don't remember it looking our way. I just remember seeing a side view as it walked in the opposite direction. I remember it was black or dark colored. 
I spent a fair amount of time in the woods and never saw anything like it ever again in the woods. Um, that was description of creature, black or dark color, large, hairy man. Activities of witness, woke up, friends came over, we went out to go to the woods to play, normal routine, must have been summertime or on a Saturday or Sunday morning. So that's pretty cool. Now this next one is kind of a long one, but I'll go through as quick as I can because I've already done this once. <laughs> okay, uh, I got a mosquito on me. He's not biting me, but he's on me. Uh, possible, okay, this was submitted by a witness on Monday, November 1st, 2010. Uh, possible footprint found in vocalizations heard in the Flying Eagle Wildlife Management Area. Uh, that's, like I said, that's not real far from here. Did you hear that? Anyway, if, if I was to drive a car from here to there, it'd be 10, 15 minute drive. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, the season was fall. Again, the year 2010, season was fall. The month was October. The date was October was 31st October 31st 2010 in Florida Citrus County like I said not far from here location de de details located in the Flying Eagle um, wildlife management area about five miles east of downtown Inverness nearest town is Inverness highway 44 is the nearest road okay so let me shut these lights off. <sighs> okay. Uh, damn, this battery's going low too. Only got 55 minutes left on it. All right, I gotta hurry up, so. Um, all right, it's locking on me for some reason. Oh, while these batteries are running down. It usually lasts a lot longer than this. Okay, so observed yesterday on October 31st, uh, 2010. So this was reported November 1st, 2010. I was hunting in Flying Eagle Wildlife Management Area with a friend when I discovered something that I thought was very unusual. It was around 10.20 in the morning when we decided to meet back up and do some scouting for our last afternoon hunt on my quota. I had set my friend up a few hundred yards or so from Highway 44 in the morning before daylight, and I continued on for about three quarters to a mile on the edge of the swamp we were hunting. I know about where, where this supposedly happened at. Um... Uh, where was I? Oh, uh, as I continued on, I jumped something that ran off and sounded unlike a deer or a hog, but didn't think anything of it. We were walking back towards the truck and saw a couple of wet areas, puddles. When I said to my friend, let me check and see if there are any prints leading to the water to get a drink. So what they're doing is looking for like whatever they're hunting for, probably deer or hog. So they're looking for them prints. Okay. So uh, as I continued on, oh, wait a minute. Oh, as I continued on, I jumped something that ran off. Oh, okay. I already read that. Uh, as I walked over, over there to see, I looked down and noticed something out of the ordinary. I called my friend over to show him it was a footprint, similar to a human's. Not real large, but kind of wide uh, for the length of it. It was so fresh that you could still see the thermal lines in the mud 
from the bottom of the foot. It was the only one that we could really make out. The heel and ball made deep impressions while the toes were not really deep in the mud in comparison. I had my cell phone with me so I took two photos of the print and one of the area we were in then we marked a tree next to it so we could uh, so we could find it again like I said these are screenshots that I took okay um, it just seemed very odd to find a print like that in the middle of a swamp. Yeah, no kidding, right? We returned after lunch for an afternoon hunt. I did notice one other thing with the squirrels after we returned. I didn't go as far this time, but I noticed the squirrels barking more than usual off in the distance is how they warn others of pending dangers. They sound kind of like a bird. But if you see one, his tail will be flapping too. And, be, and they're really loud. Uh, as time went on, they got closer and closer to where I was sitting. And then all of a sudden went silent. Just an observation. I spent most of my life in the woods in Florida, either hiking, biking, or hunting. This was the first time I noticed something like this. It is probably human. Yeah, he says... It's probably human, but who would be out there barefoot? Well, you guys saw that snake earlier. We got rattlesnakes, coral snakes. We've got uh, a, a cacti. You know, you just ain't walking around the swamp in your bare feet, you know. You, we got snapping turtles. and <clears throat> Um... And then he goes on to say, we ended up laughing quite hard about it after we named him Eddie the Yeti. <laughs> Eddie the Yeti. <laughs> and I will add, this is not the first time I have heard or smelt something out of the ordinary while in the woods. They say if there's a Sasquatch close, you'll get a bad smell. Uh, also noticed, heard a couple of steps jumping into the brush before daylight that didn't resemble a deer more like a bipedal as you know two two feet like a person type uh the print should still be there and rain is in the forecast in the next couple of days and remember this is 2010 i also have photos of the print i wanted to take a cast before the rain but have to work other witnesses there were two hunting scouting other stories just what was posted in this. Uh, time and conditions, approximately 10.30 a.m., sunny, around 70 to 75 degrees, light breeze. Environment, range from cypress wetland swamp to oak hammock with palmettos. That's what we got around here. This is, and it's, ironically, this is called oak hammock. I don't know why that's centering on me. But, um, <clears throat> so... <clears throat> It's, you know, the, the limbs kind of cover you, and they're all oaks, and we've got palmettos all around here, so. Okay, follow-up investigated investigation report by BFRO investigator Kathy Betts, B-E-T-Z. I spoke to S, that's all he'll give his name is S. I spoke to S over the phone about what occurred in the Flying Eagle, Eagle Management, Wildlife Management Area. Ask anybody want to do some... Okay, let me go to the next one here. Okay. Ask anybody want to do some scouting for a late afternoon hunt. His buddy stayed a few hundred yards from their vehicle while S hiked into the woods another mile or so. During this hike, S... Uh, stated that he heard something large run off into the woods, which according to him did not sound like a typical hog or deer. But being that S didn't see the source of the noise, he thought little of it. S did state that during this time he heard the squirrels going nuts in the distance and that their noise seemed to be getting closer to him. He said 
that when they got about 100 yards away from him, they went completely silent. After meeting back up with his buddy, they encountered uh, several muddy areas and puddles that would support that would support any animal prints that they were interested in hunting. On the side of these puddles, S and his buddy found one very distinct print that looked like a barefoot human track. Still being a good distance in the woods, S and his buddy found found it very strange to see a barefoot human track. Yes, very. <coughs> now he says, I laid the butt of my muzzle loader next to the print for comparison. My butt stock is five inches long, so I figured that the print was about ten about ten and a half inches long by two and a half inches at the heel three and a half inches at the ball of the foot and they look deeper than what a human could make I took a couple of pictures of the prints with my cell phone now he also took a photo of the area S admitted that this was a rough estimation and cannot be sure of the exact dimensions of the print see photos below I'll show them to you here real quick but uh, if I can I'll download these for you So you can see them better. There's the print, and then there's where the area he was hunting in. All right, so if I can, I'll download them and put them on the screen right now. Then it says, uh, S also shared an encounter that took place in the confines of the Seminole Ranch a few years earlier. I know where that is, too. While scouting the confines of the ranch, S found himself turned around and made his way to the place where he thought his vehicle was parked, but he couldn't find it. Fearing that he was lost and with evening approaching, S managed to send a few text messages to his friend to come and locate him. While S waited for his friend to arrive and direct him out of the woods, S heard two or three very loud wood knocks very close to his location. About 30 seconds later, S heard a few whistles from the directions of the woods, <clears throat> of the wood knocks, and then a bizarre vocalization that S had never experienced before. He says, I just can't describe what I heard. I was raised in Florida and have hunted here all my life, and I know that whatever was making these noises wasn't anything I've ever heard before. Interesting. <clears throat> About a minute after hearing the vocalizations, S heard another two or three uh, softer wood knocks on the opposite side of where the original wood knocks uh, and vocalization occurred. He said, this really scared me. I knew that whatever was making those noises was on either side of me. Fortunately, his friend showed up soon after S experienced this encounter and was able to direct him out of the woods. After this encounter, S looked online for Bigfoot audio recordings that matched the unexplained vocalizations he had heard that evening. While looking through the BFRO database of Bigfoot recordings, S stated that he found an exact match to what he had heard. He says, other than the whistle sounds at the end of this recording, this is exactly what I heard. Now, uh, like I said, I don't have service here, so... Uh, the clip is called Growls and Whistlings. It says to scroll down to this clip. This is from a collection of recordings from the Barry and Moorhead Experience Expeditions, 1970s, in the Sierra Nevada uh, Mountains in California. So if I can, I'll put those on right now. Now remember, those weren't, if you heard them, they're not what he recorded. Those are exactly what the sounds that he, he did hear. So, all right, now, all right. Uh, the Flying Eagle Wildlife Management Area 
or water management area is located in southeast Citrus County made up of 10,000 acres of lakes, marshes, oak, highlands, and swamps. This area includes five miles of the Withlacoochee River. That's where we go fishing a lot, and we've camped down there. That's where I camped uh, last year on my solo, as a matter of fact, right on the Withlacoochee River. Uh, that's also the year before when I went in November uh, when we slept on the boat. So, about BFRO investigator Kathy Betts, again, B-E-T-Z. Kathy has been a nurse for over 27 years and currently works in a busy ICU. An amateur naturalist, Kathy has been intrigued by the Bigfoot phenomenon from an early age. Attended the following expeditions. Uh, in 2006, this is all the expeditions she's attended. 2006, Florida Expedition. 2007, North Carolina Expedition. 2008, South Florida Expedition, 2008 North Florida Expedition, 2009 Central Florida Expedition, uh, 2009 Utah Expedition, uh, 2010 Tennessee Survey Ex Expedition, 2011 East Texas Expedition, uh, 2012 North Florida Expedition again, 2013 Michigan uh, Upper Peninsula Expedition. So anyway, that's, um, yeah, very, very interesting. What's this? Oh, this is another one here. Okay, here, I, I, I'll, I'll read this one to you, too. This is another one. Uh, remember, this is all around me, guys. Uh, the, first, the first time Dave Shealy... I think that's how you pronounce it, S-H-E-A-L-Y, saw a skunk ape. He says he was 10 years old. It was 1974, a few years after his father had come upon a set of footprints left by the creature, an Everglades version of Bigfoot named for its supposedly pungent odor. That's why they call it skunk ape. Like I said, you know, they can smell, you usually smell a bad odor. Dave was out deer hunting with his brother Jack in the swamp behind his house in what's now Big Cypress National Preserve when he encountered the ape, uh, the ape incarnate. He says, it was walking across a swamp and my brother spotted it first, but I couldn't see it over the grass. I wasn't tall enough, Sheely says. My brother picked me up and I saw it about 100 yards away. We were just kids, but we'd heard about it and knew for sure what we were looking at. It looked like a man, but completely covered with hair. Oh, there's, I didn't get all of it. It started again. He and his brother stared at the, and that's all I got. Huh. I must have thought that was the end of it. But anyway, there's some stories. Uh, that last one, of course, is in the Everglades. It's about four hours south of me. Four, the four, four hours, four or five hours south, south of me. So, anyway, I'm gonna kick on the laptop and I'm gonna watch a Christmas story, and I'll be back with you before I hit the hay. Like I said, I, I've already done this once. Now I'm doing it again. <laughs> Are you guys? Is it me? You guys look awful blurry. Sorry if it is. Uh, let's see, I got 33 minutes left on this battery, 24 minutes left on the card, so I want to go ahead and I'm going to watch my movie and I'll be back with you guys before I go to sleep. Okay guys, so I think I'm going to try to go to sleep. I went out, stoked the fire up, got the fire going, stood by the fire for a minute. Uh, can't watch my movie because uh, the media player won't play it for some reason my computer plays it just a dvd i don't understand why the media player won't play it but so i can't watch my movie but right behind me <laughs> psyching myself out i could have sworn i heard footsteps too like somebody walking through like right behind me so i shined the light around i didn't see anything they stopped 
and I hollered, hey. I didn't yell real loud because, you know, the neighbors, they're in bed now, they're asleep, kids are asleep. So I was like, hey. And then I heard it walking away. And then just, I didn't hear it anymore. It was definitely like somebody walking, like two feet. I don't know, guys. <laughs> anyway so i think i'm gonna try to go to sleep it's early for me like real early it is it's 11 43 so i'm gonna try to try to go to sleep so i, I started taking a nap earlier right after i ate that, that turkey man <laughs> Those potatoes and noodles, I laid down here, just to check my bed out, and next thing I know, I was starting to nod off, and then all at once I heard that horn blowing. I was like, "Oh crap! I bet you it's monkey." Well, she must have, she must have got out all right because she didn't come back. So, <laughs> so everything should be, so she'll be here tomorrow. So, I think she's going to come around noonish, probably a little afternoon. Um, but by then, I'll, I'll be up and I'll get this tour down. And then she can, we'll just pull the truck. Like I said, we're, we're just going to sleep in the back of the Chevy tomorrow. So, because uh, it's supposed to rain Sunday. And I don't want to take the tent in have to hang it up in the garage the best I can, lay it over something or whatever, let it dry out for a couple days, and then I gotta take it back outside, roll it all back up. I don't I don't like to do that just for one night, you know. To me, it's just not worth it. Uh, just to do, you know, one night. Uh, this wasn't bad at all. Uh, probably, I'd have to look at the the video but I, th I think it was like 10 minutes took me to set everything up so yeah um so anyway like i said uh, if i think of anything else uh oh i don't think i got it because it, it was when i thought i was recording the bigfoot stories that i was reading you and i wasn't apparently could have sworn it said record I could have sworn I hit that red button down there to stop it, so I don't know what happened there. Um, but the day after the microwave incident, when it kicked on by itself, the day after that, a monkey's mom said that she had a hanger thrown at her, a clothes hanger. Uh, I can't, you know, verify that. Or, you know, she she was in a room by herself. So this is third party, so I don't know, but that's what she said. And then later that night, which was the day after the microwave incident, or was it the same day? No, it was the day after, I believe. I bought Monkey a music box. Oh, several years ago at a uh, at a flea market for like six bucks. It's a jewelry box music box and it has a little battery powered clock in it if i can find a clip of that i'll throw it in for you now we're gonna do another episode of free market finds okay so today excuse me this is the first find i got I got this from monkey she had to work and i didn't so i had her drop me and bruno off at the free market because it was kind of in the area where she was at but it's a wind up music box so you wind it up and it'll play until it stops and she hasn't she said in several years she has not played that music box it hasn't been moved it's sitting right where it was the other night we we're watching youtube on tv we we're just sitting there watching tv talking all at once for about eight or ten seconds i heard this noise and i said what the hell was that was that your phone she said no that was my music box and i said what she sells in my music box. So how can after that many years can it start playing for, you know, eight to ten more seconds? And of course we don't have cameras in the bedrooms, you know, for privacy reasons, so 
I didn't catch that, but man, that was something all them years, and then it just starts playing a few seconds. Like I said, 10 seconds might be a stretch, but I know I'll say 6 to 8 seconds anyway, because I was trying to figure out what it was. It sounded really weird, you know? And then she did pick it up and give it a little whine, and that's what I heard. That's, well, she heard it too. That's what we heard. So that's pretty weird, man. So I think I'm going to try to get a little bit of rest. Catch you guys in the morning. If I think anything else, I'll kick you back on. I don't want my battery. And my batteries are draining bad out here, man. My, my headlamp, it's draining. And I just charged them. Not on this one, but the one that goes across here, my headband light. Um, they're going dim. Uh, these batteries are running out really quick. I only got 42 minutes left on this camera. Uh, I can understand why Old Blue ran out earlier because I recorded almost all the way here. And just as I was pulling back in here, it, it died. Um, these lights, they're working fine now since I changed them, but I had all them batteries charged. And I got my... I got my... Uh, trail cam set up over there and when I went out to stoke the fire and stuff it was kicking on I could see the IR lights kick on and stuff when I'd walk past it but then right before I came in here they wouldn't kicking on no more so I think well when I first turned it on it was in the yellow almost red I don't know what's going on with batteries out here man it's crazy so anyway guys chat at you in a little bit you guys check this out it's 12 45 quarter to one that's fog that is fog you guys are seeing coming off the lake well that swamp look at that eerie wow wanted to share that with you guys that's it with that behind me now listen guys I just straight up right before I turned the camera on heard a tree knock that night vision on I straight up heard a tree knock Right after I heard that about 75, 100 yards that way. Right after I heard that tree knock, I heard the coyotes going nuts. See, there's... There's the front of the tractor. So right over there. And it's weird how... My damn light just, or my trail cam just started working for no reason. I hope you guys heard that. I'm not kidding you, it wasn't a tree branch falling, dude. I'm telling you. I am crapping you negative here. It was a straight up tree knock. So I was getting the camera off the tripod 
and I just got it off the tripod when they started going nuts. It's gonna be a long night. See, I'm looking, you know, that's what I'm seeing right there. Damn. See, I got this, this big light here. You guys hear that? I hope you guys are hearing this stuff. That was the spookiest thing that happened to me in a long time. And they just stopped. But that is definitely 7,500 yards that direction. And it's right exactly where I heard that freaking tree knock I heard. Bang! And then all at once, well, as soon as I heard the bang, I grabbed my camera off the tripod. And just as I grabbed the screen to turn it on, that's when they started going crazy. How was that? Where's my camera? Right there. Now it's not on. Hmm. I'll keep you guys posted. Okay guys, I'm gonna try to go back to sleep again. I'm leaving my boots on this time. Damn bugs. Alright. Magical place. Good night. Good morning, guys. That was interesting. Okay, guys, so I was gonna start getting ready to tear down. It's only 10 minutes after seven. But I'm gonna leave that up for a little bit because I felt some raindrops just a few minutes ago. And the sky is very, very gray. Monkey's not going to be here until probably about noon, so I better just wait before I take that down. <laughs> if I take that down, I have no no shelter. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think what I'm going to do, I think we're going to have a hot chocolate. Just dumped in here. Yeah, it's hot enough. Now I gotta let it cool. <laughs> now I gotta get my breakfast. Four original snack sticks from the Dollar Tree. One dollar twenty-five cents. 
I'm probably going to eat all four of these. I think I will. Got the fire started. Well, kind of. Yeah, it's it's gone. Uh, I didn't have to blow on it or anything. I just took some palm frond, <clears throat> brown palm frond leaves and threw in there and it kicked up. All right, let me have my breakfast and my hot chocolate and I'll be back with you. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and start taking this down. I'm not gonna pack everything away because I think like all the camera equipment and stuff like that, it's all pretty much gonna go in the car with us or with her tomorrow. <clears throat> so I'm not really gonna have to haul a bunch of stuff. So, but let's go ahead and tear this down. I'll speed you guys up, of course. Like I said, the rest of that stuff will be, I'll be putting in the car uh, when we leave in the morning. So I don't know why I was rolling up my pad. Now I got to blow it up, back up again. Duh. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I'm going to change my shirt. So I got two of these. <laughs> this one's cool. It's got a pocket on it, but starting to get some holes in the front of it I think from I was welding didn't even think about it so but yeah uh, and then I'm just gonna wait on her I'm gonna put the poles up there strap them on but that's pretty much that in the gas can is pretty much all I'll be hauling home tomorrow so anyway guys hope you enjoyed this I know the video ran kind of long but I wanted to share this with you. It's a lot of fun. Got another one coming up next month, my annual. So, but I'll film some of this today. What we do today and tonight. Uh, just kind of hangouts, what we're going to do. We may go across, this, across the road there and go fishing. So, uh, maybe give that a shot. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Again, appreciate it. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now. Hope you guys had fun because I did. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.